Welcome back to Podiatry Marketing. I'm the co-host Tyson Franklin and with me today is Big Jim McDonald over in, are you on Ontario? Oh, Tyson. I'm going to do that again. Quebec. You're in Quebec. (laughs) I'm going to do it. Let me do that again. I stuffed up. I went to say Canada and for some reason I couldn't get down. Okay, do it again. I think it was fun. It was fun to think that I was in Ontario. No, I won't. Okay, let's do it again. Welcome back to Podiatry Marketing. I am your co-host, Tyson Franklin. With me today is Big Jim McDonald, all the way over in Canada, in Quebec, just to be a bit more accurate. So, Jim, how are you doing today? Tyson, I'm doing great. The uh, The number of other people that are calling me Big Jim now is, uh, it's getting a little bit out of control, but... Uh, no, is that I, happening? I, people are people catching on to it. Big Jim Mac. Big Jim Mac. I, I won't name names, but there's definitely been some people that I've had phone calls with or uh, Zoom calls with who uh, have referred to me as Big Jim. So the uh, the reputation is spreading <laughs> uh, thanks to you and uh, the intro. So I reckon there'll be people at conferences soon that'll have t-shirts, and you'd be able to you'd be able to sell t-shirts <laughs> that has Big Jim Mac on the front. Yeah, yeah, swag. They get the hats, get the t-shirts, get the uh, mouse pads, maybe some coffee mugs. We'll uh, we'll we'll stock up the store with that that merch probably. Well, maybe we need to put that on the podiatry marketing, podiatry dot marketing website. We can start having merch on there, big Jim Mac hats and, and mugs. It's got me thinking. It's really got me thinking. <laughs> Since this is a marketing podcast and we like marketing, we For should sure. do this because, okay, Why everyone, we, we are. No, we're going to. We're going to do this. We're, we're going to come up with something before the end, before, or probably not before the end of this year because it's very close to the end of this year. But by mid next year, we we're going to have some merch. All right, that sounds like a plan. Okay, Jim, what are we what are we talking about today? Today we're going to talk about YouTube YouTube marketing for podiatrists. Do you find YouTube hard to say sometimes? Apparently, apparently, I get uh, a little tongue tied over saying YouTube, but uh, no, I, it's definitely one of those platforms, those channels, which has grown exponentially. Uh, since my time on the internet i must admit probably going back maybe two years ago i would go onto youtube a little see see, i say youtube but i'll i'll talk in canadian and american youtube and i'll edit that out what the hell anyway i'm gonna go i'm gonna edit that part out that was shit so anyway so going back a couple of years ago i would only ever go on youtube if for some reason Somebody had a link there and I clicked on it just to watch more information about what they were talking about. But the last two years, I've noticed I'm getting more and more into going to YouTube actually as a search option first before even going to Google to search for something. No, I think that's a huge point. Uh, if you look at it by kind of search volume, uh, YouTube is now the sec- the second biggest search engine in the world. It's like you said, if someone wants to learn how to do something or vi- see something, Sometimes just a, a quick video, like whether it's mm. how to repair your washing machine or, you know, some household things, but also how to put up festoon lights. There you that go. was something my, my wife and I were doing for our daughter's 18. And we went outside to try and put up these festoon lights and we really struggled with it. And so eventually we said, let's go to the tube. We went to YouTube and there was the video exactly on how to put up festoon lights on guttering bang straight down to the hardware store, got the stuff and the rest was history. No, I mean, that's a perfect example. Um, instead of having to read it, you just have someone d- demonstrate it for you or mm. do the how to there. And I think it does not only does it work for festo- festoon lighting, but also can work for, um, you know, different types of foot and ankle related things. I think people are searching there for answers about, you know, they have plantar fasciitis, how do they fix it at home or what, what can they do uh, what are their treatment options? And before they call a clinic or make an appointment with someone, uh, that, that YouTube is becoming one of those channels where they they search for answers, whether it be Google, um, and now it's YouTube for the videos. So when you're saying marketing on YouTube, are you talking about doing your own videos to put on YouTube to market your business or to actually do advertising on YouTube? Yeah, so I think there's a different, there's a couple of different ways to utilize YouTube like in your own marketing. Um, I think, you know, one way that can be a very successful use of it and whether you decide to use it, you know, on your website or not, but is, you know, recording some of these helpful explainer videos, right? So 
uh, you know, I, I've kind of written scripts in the past for some of my previous, the clinics I've worked with, but what's a one minute or a 90 second explanation of a, a you know, something like plantar fasci fasciitis, for example, what is that diagnosis? You know, what causes it? What are potential options for treatment? And then what are next steps that people can do if they don't get better at home? Uh, so YouTube allows you to basically upload that video for free and host it. And then you can use it basically on your website to basically embed it on your website. Um, sometimes people will use private or other paid versions of video hosting, but YouTube is maybe a good way for people just getting started um, to upload and have those videos on their website. Uh, and it can be, that's kind of like the first step in marketing is like I said, those how-to videos are sometimes a video explainer of some of the care that you provide. Yeah. And I know there's other programs that you can use to record videos and put on your website. However, like you just said, YouTube is the second biggest search engine. So right. people that aren't rushing out going, mm, I might go to Vimeo and find out about this. They'll go to YouTube first. No, a hundred percent. Uh, that's the thing too, is, and like, you can have those uh, procedure or diagnosis specific videos on your website. That's one option. But the other option too, is let's say you've run some local advertising and you had a 30 second spot. Maybe it's like yeah. you know, Tyson Franklin, like, you know, Karen's like favorite podiatrist. So like within the title of that YouTube video, it says like Tyson Franklin's podiatrist, Karen, and it's, it's a, another way for you to rank in Google search because not only does Google show up with websites and podcasts. I mean, if you type in podiatry mark, you might see, uh, or see a podcast that you know of, but it also pulls in YouTube videos. So yeah. if you have your, your name, podiatrist or foot doctor, and the name of where you live at, there's a high probability that you're, you'll show up on the first page in Google if no one else in your local area, or you have the most viewed video in your local area about being a podiatrist. So there can be some benefits of either, you know, when you do video advertising or you just decide you want to do some video or some video testimonials to have those keyword, those local keywords in the video, because that can be additional visibility on Google for people looking for your services. Well, it's true. Recently, there's been a lot of things I've been searching for. I may have just searched in Google, but when I do the search and it comes down, all of a sudden there'll be three videos, three YouTube videos is sitting there at the top. And yeah, sometimes you look through and you go, oh yeah, that's exactly what I'm after. But I'm noticing that more and more that the, the YouTube videos are actually turning up more just in your general search on Google as well. And, and that would be based on the words that you're using. No, a hundred percent. And the reason why those show up is that, uh, video is more engaging than text, right? So if they can get you to click on a video, uh, you know, like maybe it's going to be a 90 second video about podiatry, but obviously Google owns YouTube. So like, it's kind yeah. of staying in the family. If you go over to YouTube and then you get sucked down the rabbit hole of watching cat videos or Australian rules football <laughs> or, you know, the Olympics or something. And then all of a sudden, like you're 45 minutes later, you were looking for a podiatrist initially. And then now like you just watched the Olympic final of the 10,000 meters or something. So, I mean. Um, you have to be very deliberate, I would say, when you're when you're jumping into YouTube because it can be a bit more distracting and kind of uh, engaging than other platforms. Um, <laughs> but uh, but that's the local aspect of uh, you showing up in those local searches um, can be can be a huge marketing advantage for your practice. So where should somebody start? Podiatrists are going okay. I haven't really shot too many videos at the moment. What do they need to do to, to sort of get this started? Yeah, I mean, I think the the first step is kind of knowing those five or 10 different uh, procedures or diagnoses you want to treat. Uh, and whether you're, you or someone in your staff has the ability to kind of like write a script. I think writing a script and, and kind of filming, um, whether it be with a, with, a, with a smartphone or a decent, um, maybe hire someone to film for a half day, film some of these, uh, these descriptions of these procedures or you treating a mock-up patient with a 90 second kind of voiceover regarding that. I think that's that's somewhere that can be started. Um, I think also there's different ways of going about doing it. We'll talk about that maybe a little bit easier later on, like we talked about. Uh, you jumped in and said a little bit something about advertising. We'll get into there in a little bit. The advertising is a little bit lower lift. It doesn't require any kind of video production from yourself or somebody else. Yeah. Um, but that's something we'll talk about kind of as we kind of come down here. But I think one option along with being local um, and kind of, 
that can be very beneficial is displaying that subspecialty niche. I think we've talked a lot about that in the past, you and I, about you know what what type of patients you want to treat and what do you want to be seen as the expert in. Um, so you know maybe a hybrid of like maybe you're the sports medicine podiatrist in Melbourne or the sports medicine podiatrist in Chicago or the diabetic foot specialist in Las Vegas. Um, that's another opportunity. So it's not just even local. It's it's also showing this this subspecialty. So you show up both in YouTube search and in Google search. Um, but yeah, I think that getting back to what your your question was. Um, within uh, Google's advertising platform, there are ways to uh, show up, whether it be text only or a motion video uh, advertisement that can be shown you know, kind of geofenced to your local area about, you know, if you haven't filmed a lot of video, there are yeah. ways that Google does make these almost like text motion video creators that, that do show kind of an advertisement. But, you know, the more you can have your face treating the patients you want to treat, yeah, on video, it doesn't have to be long videos, but um, that that's you know being o being open to the idea of being on camera, either you doing it yourself or have something to help you is kind of the first step. Yeah, and I think if you if you're scared about being in front of the camera, like if you like, I I don't like being in front of the camera. I look stupid. Don't worry, everyone looks stupid on camera, but you just get used to it after a period of time. But you can start by doing a video, and you don't necessarily have to be in it. You can shoot some footage and you can narrate over the top and just put it together or like I've done some for some online courses where it's really a, a PowerPoint presentation that I'm doing. The whole thing's been recorded. I'm just narrating over the top. And if you want, you can sort of flash in and flash out without having to be on the video constantly for the whole time. So there's, there's a number of ways of doing it. And if in doubt, I, I reckon do a video course. I went and did a one day video course beginning of COVID because it was something I wanted to know more about. I think that, that you bring up a good point, you know, whether it's uh, Microsoft PowerPoint or it's Apple Keynote, if you have, you know, maybe six to eight slides of, you know, your company's logo, maybe it's you treating specific type, maybe it's just photos of you treating specific type of patients, like in a slideshow format that's relatively engaging, um, yeah. that, that can be a substitute for, you know, a few thousand, you know, maybe you don't have to get that production crew or incur, you know, a few thousand dollars of video production. But uh, that is, that is a good way to start as well. Along with you filming your own videos is it, like you said, maybe your staff is just like taking some almost what they call B roll of you treating kind of a mock-up patient or, you know, showing an orthotic, how you're uh, molding an orthotic or something. So I think there's a lot of different ways to kind of get started in video. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of the, the way to kind of, I would say, the most common way that podiatrists are using video, the next one we'll talk about here in a little bit, it's a little bit different um, and it kind of requires uh, more in-depth knowledge about uh, different types of marketing and affiliate uh, type of uh, relationships. Yeah, well, one, one thing that's interesting about some of the videos is one of the videos I shot just before I sold my clinic, in, I shot it in 2015, but it's had over 84,000 views and it was goes for 90 seconds how to strap your heel, like, do you, yeah, how to strap your heels for heel pain. And I'm in the video, but you don't see my head. You only really see me from the shoulders down and the patient's foot showing them how to do the strapping. The audio is terrible. The lighting isn't the best, but it's had 84,000 views on it. And I have not even promoted that video. It's just turned up when people have been doing searches. So like you said, these short little information videos are, are what people are actually searching for. And, and I think this other type of video, I guess I didn't touch on, but um, probably the most powerful uh, type of video that you can have recorded, and obviously you have to have the patient's permission, our patient, and I don't, I know that in Australia, some of these are not allowed, but um, at least in the U.S., in some states in the U.S., these are allowed, but these are these patient testimonial videos. You know, yeah, if you're, you it, yeah. yeah, if you're, if you're treating, um, <laughs> you know, people with, uh, you know, ingrown toenail or you want to do surgery, you want to do orthotics having someone speak for you uh, is, is a way to really um, endear patients and really show, uh, they, they explain the value proposition and, and the kind of the goodwill uh, and the, the great care you provided them. So I'm sorry, Australian podiatrists, that you can't uh, partake in this, but for the, or, uh, the podiatrists in the US where it's, a, it's legal in your state, these are very powerful videos and uh, something that can be used in a lot of different ways, whether it's 
on your website, on your YouTube channel with advertising. There's a lot of different opportunities there. Yeah, I always think, yeah, you got to find out what, what the rules are in your area and I always think don't deliberately go and break the rules, but look for loopholes if they're available. So even though you can't get a patient talking about your podiatry clinic, you could get a patient to do a video talking about the experience of seeing a podiatrist and the benefits of seeing a podiatrist, which is almost like promoting the profession, which you could technically use in some of your marketing. It's not talking about you, it's talking about the profession because you're trying to do the right thing by the profession. Yeah. But I always think it's check the rules in your area. If it's just, no, you can't do it, then don't do it because it's not worth getting in trouble over. No, for sure. But I know America, you can, and UK, you can as well, I think. Yep. The rules will change. <laughs> One day. No, they always change. They always change. They just, um, and I, I understand, like, I'm not a huge fan myself of testimonials. That may, I am of reviews, but testimonials, not so much. That's just me. Yeah. Because you never get a bad testimonial. <laughs> <laughs> true. That's true. I mean, like, but uh, I think, I think seeing the experience from the patient's perspective can be valuable yeah. for people. Obviously, you're never going to see a negative uh, testimonial, but at the same time, I think people want to know what it's like uh, to be treated by someone. And uh, yeah, I, I think they can be powerful. But like you said, there are, you know, there are not that people are skeptical, but I definitely I know there's no negative testimonials out there. Yeah, I think the only thing is because you see these videos sometimes, they'll have some guy's got some power cruncher, and he's he's absolutely ripped. And yes, I recommend using the, if you want to get abs like me, you need this power <laughs> cruncher. And I'm like, you had abs like that before you even started using that thing. <laughs> so they're, they're, it's those sort of things. But I do agree when, when patients, if a patient was talking about an experience somewhere at a podiatry clinic and other patients can see the patient go, oh, I relate to them. That's me. That's my problem. They look like me. They sound like me. They're doing the same activities. I can see, I can see how it can be powerful. But like you talked about, people have good bullshit detectors, right? Like it's not, yeah. uh, it's not that, that you want the patient to say that like you walk on water and that like you're a God. With unless scalp you on your do, head. unless you do <laughs> walk on water and you but, are but a you bit know, of a demigod. But you know what I'm saying though, right? Like yeah. there, there's, there's genuine people that are giving reviews. It's like the grandma who's, you know, who's, you know, bunning your fix or something like that. Just that when they come across as very genuine, you know, people can tell and not tell, but, um. I guess we'll move on to the the last kind of a yes. small caveat around YouTube marketing. And this is maybe a hidden area of a potential revenue source that not a lot of podiatrists maybe know about. So maybe we're giving away like a big secret uh, in the profession, but- um, Oh, here we go. One of the big should we, ones Should that we I, whisper? Should we whisper should, this one? Maybe we should whisper just a little bit now. But- Yeah, you gotta um, lean in. <laughs> but I'm, I'm gonna yell from the rooftops. I'm, I'm not yes. afraid to talk about it, but this is- um what's known as affiliate marketing. So for those of you who aren't, uh, for those podiatrists that are busy in clinic and don't have time to know uh, what this is, this is basically uh, selling some products through your YouTube videos or through your website. And you're basically getting a small cut from Amazon or from some different provider. So what I've seen recently is there's some podiatrists out there that have very, very large either social media or YouTube followings. Maybe they get 150,000 views on a ingrown toenail video or a yeah. plantar fasciitis video. And basically somewhere in that description, there'll be a link out to Amazon. Um, and it's usually, you have to just, you know, there's a disclaimer there. It's people realize that you're getting paid a small portion, uh, a commission on a sale of whatever they would were to buy on Amazon. But, you know, if you get a YouTube channel or you're making content, on a consistent basis, this high quality that's getting a lot of views. Um, there's a few different examples out there um, that you can even you can find on YouTube yourself of podiatrists who are probably making a decent side income with some of this uh, affiliate few. business they have. So, I've spoken to a few podiatrists who are <laughs> making well in excess of a hundred thousand US a year, yep. just through not not just affiliate marketing, but just ads on their YouTube channel because it's so popular now. Yeah. And this is just this is just extra money they're getting as a so they, they could stop working tomorrow and they could just keep adding videos on and they've got this extra hundred K American, yeah, which hundred and forty thousand Australian coming in on the side. It's not a bad not a bad thing. 
No, not a bad thing. I think when I was, maybe I'm old school and I'm obviously, I do digital marketing now. So it's, it's funny to like kind of admit this uh, on the air, but, uh, I could never have imagined like taking out my, my camera or my, my iPhone and having my assistant like record an ingrown toenail. Oh, like nice. just, it seemed to me like what I, like I said, I'm old school. I'm, I'm a boomer as some of the kids like to say these days, but like that, rela that relationship between you and the patient, um, you know, if, if they give you permission, I guess it's totally okay. But like, I was never one big on, uh, you know, uh, filming those kinds of things or I never did when I was in practice, but not, not to slam the folks that do that, but, um, I don't I know. Like, on them. <laughs> I wish I had, a, I wish exactly the same thing, but you look at the, the only difference between if we had to started doing it ourselves 15 years ago, Jim, the quality of the videos would have been so <laughs> bad. I mean, that would have just been so bad that no one would have watched them anyway because the quality was so bad but That's so true. things have improved like your your iphone now is so powerful when it comes to video that people don't have an excuse not to do short videos and be posting them somewhere unless they just too lazy and don't want to do it no, for sure. I think that's, uh, it can be a huge, powerful way to, uh, like we talked about, like show, show patients all the, all the care that you provide. So I think, uh, there's so many different tools out there. And like I said, YouTube is a really kind of, um, overlooked platform, I think by a lot of podiatrists because, oh, it's just that video place where people go waste time and, and do those things. But whether it's, you know, uh, something that you embed on your own, embed on your own website, it's a, it's a way to kind of begin uh you know becoming more r locally relevant in video form or you know one of these affiliate business or advertising uh, it's definitely a platform i think that more podiatrists should, should learn more about i mm. know oh, i agree agree 100 percent. so this has been fantastic jim so i look forward to talking to you again next week so look at plan tyson okay talk to you later bye now